All right, let's talk setup. Um, I mentioned before I use direct warping. Um, I can uh, use a, a warping board. Um, if, you, if you flip over the Kromsky harp and put the pegs in, you can set up a warping board. Super cool, something that every weaver should learn to do. Um, but in my setup, it's actually easier for me to just uh, go direct, uh, especially because I have enough space. Now with the living room uh, rearranged, move a little bit of furniture. Good reason to sweep. Um, and then uh, you can set up your warping peg. Now, my warping peg is attached to my island, and then it goes over to the loom. Now, I'm going to bring you to the loom, and we're going to talk about um, waste yarn and how to calculate it out when you're thinking about what you're making and how big you want to make it. Now, something that I haven't talked about is what am I doing with all of this beautiful yarn? Um, I've been thinking about this and I think I'm going to make a, a lap blanket. So we're going to go the full 32 inches on the loom um, and yeah and I think I've got enough. Should. It's good and bulky. Yeah, we should be good. So let's grab the measuring tape and go to the loom and we'll talk about that. Okay, bird's eye view of the loom. Here we go. So when we're talking waste fabric or waste yarn, it is the yarn that cannot be worked into your project. So I look at it as the distance between your front beam and your back beam. That's your safest way to do it. So everything in my Kromsky from here to here, which is roughly two feet. So if I'm going to make a project, in this case it's going to be a lap blanket, that I want to be what, four feet, four feet long final product, we'll say three, three feet long. Now you add in your waist, you're looking at now five feet that you need to have your direct warping peg from the back beam back here all the way to your warping peg. So I'm gonna measure that out and we'll be right back. Okay, so here I have my warping peg attached to my island, six feet. I decided to add in an extra foot just in for oopsies because they happen. So six feet from the back to my warping peg and what we're going to do because we're going the full 32 inches okay let me just do this for this pattern there are two different ways we can do this. I'd like to go because this is a larger piece. I'd like to have larger and we have bulkier yarn. I'm going with four. So it will be four of each color and then switch. So four black, four gray, four black, four gray. That's the way it's gonna come together. And um, I'm gonna get this started. Okay tools that are needed for warping. Scissors. A hook of multiple sizes. That, that's difficult to see. Let's try that thing that, that the makeup people do. There we go. This will take you through the small holes. This will take you through the slots. 
This will take you through the slots if you want, but this is more efficient. You see where I'm going with this. You'll also notice that over here, you'll see my yarn is set up on a chair behind my loom in bowls. They're not going anywhere. I'm center pulling, so they should flow really nice and smoothly all the way through this warping. So let's get started. one of those times where you get your steps in people. Now by four, what I'm talking about is, let me make sure you can see what I'm doing. When I pull it through the first slot, tell me you can see this, yeah. Oh, sorry for the jiggling. Apparently I've put you on a, on a soft spot on the floor. Not that I have soft spots, but this just doesn't want to sit still. When I pull it through, I'm going to do this slot and the next slot there will be two that go through because we're going to take the loop okay so I'm going to grab the loop pull it through all right and I'm walking all the way back to my warping peg and that's where it it stops okay at this end we're going to wrap it around come through the second slot and pull it through. Okay. So now we have four. Now we need to switch it up to the gray now. And I'm not going to tie, you can tie that off, clip it, start over. I'm not going to, because this is all waste anyway. So why add more work? I'm a big fan of working efficiently. So let's tie this one on. Just a second. And two. Is he on the phone? No. I'm texting him, so what, what, what does that say? Are you staying busy? Um, I'm recording a video right now, man. That's okay, just so that you're aware, because you were right in the line of the camera, okay? okay. Thank you. Well, mm -hmm. how do you sound that out? What? Mm -hmm. Eh? Is a E? Is an E? The eh sound is an E. And then ol, which is a. Good. Two of them.
B, E, E, there's two E's, N. You're welcome. Okay, I'm going to bring in for a close-up once I get this next one done. And I'll show you what I'm doing. Now you do have to be kind of aware of what's going on with your yarn. Because you'll see that I've got a little bit of a tangle here and I might need to arrange that, fix that up with the bowls in just a sec. But it's easy to fix and keep controlled. And it makes warping way faster when you're not having to deal with constant knots, right? So, but that's, again, everybody does things their own way. I'm not going to say my way is better than others. I'm saying that what I do works for me. Okay. All right. So I'm going to bring the camera around and take a look at what we've got going here. Do, do, do. Okay. Come at it from this angle because it looks weird. Now I've seen people using um, four warping pegs, using hooks for it. Really cool idea. I'm working on something that can work here with that same idea. Um, but for now, I still deal with one warping peg, so you get that angle happening, and eventually it will all come together. But we have two black, two gray, two black to gray, to black, to gray, and I'm going to do this all the way across. And each one of these is two, right? So we have four and four and four and four. So when we get into the hound's tooth patterning on this, it will go four and four. So we'll make all that work. So I'm going to get more of this done and then I'll be back. Okay, so I've tied off. We have the full 32 inches. It's still on the warping peg. That actually took me about half an hour. Now, I will confess that because of the angle, I actually had this, this side of the warp was tight and this was quite loose. Now it still is, like there's a difference, but I had lost four inches in the process. This kind of thing happens and all I did was at the warping peg, because you're not, you have one continual piece of yarn here, actually two because there's two different colors, and I just rebalanced it just enough so that it will work. Now this is not for the faint of heart because you're picking up the yarn and you're giving it a good tug and everything else. Um, but it's doable. So sometimes you just got to think a little unconventionally and keep in mind you don't want to drop it. You don't want to lose your loop because then you can put it back on the warping peg. Um, our next step is going to be winding the warp. And I will get one of my lovely assistants to assist me with that. Um, and I will be back then. Okay, so I've en enlisted a lovely assistant. Hello, lovely assistant. Ooh, there we go, up I there. So bad right yeah, now. you should have seen me yesterday. I was gorgeous. Anyway, um, we've now trimmed the, uh, the loop. We are no longer one continuous piece of yarn, in this case, two. I have... My warp separators, and now we're going to line the warp. Be mindful of the ratchet and pawl system that you don't end up with your things stuck. This process should only take about two to three minutes, really. 
Um, so it's not all that disruptive to whatever family member is assisting you at that moment. Weaver and Rush, go find something else to do, please. Rush, go downstairs. Go on. Our cat and dog seem to think that now is a good time to play um, wrestle. I disagree. So, for new weavers, why am I putting this in? If your warp, when you get it onto the apron, is all bunched up, you get something called cigaring happening. And it will forever be uneven. So when you're trying to work, you'll end up with uh, floppy yarn. And it is frustrating because all the work you're putting into the prep and everything else here becomes for naught, really, because you've got problems. So warp separator is your friend. Almost done. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Longer warps, of course, do require more. I'm going a little overboard right now, and you can drop that now quite safely. You sure? Yep, absolutely. There we go. Thank you All very right. much. You're welcome. Now that it's wound on, it is perfectly safe for her to have dropped that and that can be left hanging for the moment because the next step is going to be, um, other than shooing the dog away, no, away, thank you, um, will be to thread the eyes. So we'll get there.